Hey guys, Mike here. Now this video is going to be all about finishing concrete and the skills you need to finish a concrete slab. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about concrete, how to learn the skills and how to grow your business, and me teaching you how to successfully work with concrete. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Also, if you get any value out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. So we got this slab poured today. It's about 36 degrees out this morning. The concrete truck showed up at seven o'clock. It's now nine o'clock in the morning and we're gonna check the concrete to see how firm it is uh, to get ready to start finishing here. So let's check it out. What we do to check it is we press in the concrete with our fingers here. You can see that's still a little soft. I can press in there, you know, three eighths to about a half inch. So that's still a little bit soft. So we're gonna come back, give it about 20, 30 minutes, come back, check it again. All right guys, so now it's 30 minutes later from when I checked it the first time, let's check it again. Now, a couple things I'm looking for as I'm, I'm getting ready to finish this is I wanna make sure that all the bleed water has dried up. I don't wanna finish any bleed water in there, which it has, I'd say 99% of the bleed water is dried up. And because it's kind of cold, it's probably it was 36 when we got here. It's probably about 40 degrees now. The sun is coming in and out. It's kind of partly cloudy. But because it's kind of chilly, I know this concrete's going to dry a little slower than normal as it would in the summer. So if I check it and it feels like it's right, you know, my fingers only press in about an eighth of an inch or so, because we're going to power trial this today. There's the power trial right there. You know, I might be able to give it a few minutes longer just because it's so chilly out today. So let's, let's try this, check it again. So you can see, this is where I first checked it a half hour ago. And I'm pushing it again. It's a little bit firmer, but I can still press in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, because it's so cold today, is I'm gonna give that another, maybe about another half an hour. Um, if, that, if this was the middle of the summer and it was 70 or 80 degrees and the sun out, that'd probably be about a good time to start floating it with the power trial. But because it's so cold today, we're gonna give it a little bit longer. So let's give it another 30 minutes. We'll come back, check it again. All right, it's now 10 o'clock. It's a half an hour later. Let's check it again, see where we're at. The sun's out now, warming up a little bit out here. So let's check it. See that? Now I can barely press into the surface. Maybe a 16th of an inch. So that's telling me that this thing's just about ready. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I got my mag right here, okay? I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna mag the edges I'll get my edges all magged, and then we'll get the power trowel. We'll slide the power trowel onto the surface, and then we'll start floating it. So I'm gonna mag the edges. I'll show you how I do that. All right guys, now for that tool I'm using, that's called a mag float, and we always mag float the edges first, and then we use a hand trial or a steel trial after we mag float. Um, for you guys that don't have that, for you new ones that don't have that stuff yet, I got a link down in the description for those tools. And for you guys looking to do a slab like this yourself, I have a course down in the description of the video that goes over you know, how to form a slab, how to pour a slab, and how to finish a slab like we're doing here in greater detail so it takes you through all the steps so for you guys looking to do a slab like this on your own i highly recommend going down there and getting that course and that'll minimize any mistakes and just help you with uh pouring your slab all right we got the edges all mag so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to step on it i'm going to walk on it here and if if i feel like it still feels a little squishy under my feet then i'm going to give it a few more minutes if not and we'll go ahead and we'll we'll stop power trowel on this thing. So let's get on it. Yeah, it feels it feels pretty firm under my feet. You can see there. I'm barely even sinking in. Maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I'm sinking in. So we're gonna pull the power trowel up on it. We'll start it up. Stop floating this thing. And we can always, if it does feel a little soft after we start floating it, we can always stop and give it a few more minutes. But I think we're going to be all right on this one.
So for you new guys out there, you know, the timing of this first hit is pretty important. That's why I showed you the multiple times and, and why I just kept checking it the way I did. So you guys have an idea of how to time this thing when to get on it the first time. You definitely don't want to get on it too late, but you don't want to get on it too early either. You could create some problems with dips and humps. Now running a power trial really, you know, for you new guys, it, that's not really all that easy to do either. There's a trick to running that power trial. You know, you got to make sure you really hold on to those handles because that thing's going to want to take off and start spinning. And to move the power trial, it's kind of like a floor buffer. You know, in order for it to go left, you got to lift up on the handles a little bit. And then to make it go right, you got to push down on the handles a little bit. And then to make it hover in one spot, you know, you got to have a, an even amount of pressure lifting up as, and pushing down to make it kind of move just in one spot. So there's a little little uh, learning curve to, to running one of these things and when you first start running it you're going to be fighting it but that should give you a pretty good idea how to do this and then take note of that pattern I'm doing that's important too as you're finishing a slab all right so we just got done floating the concrete with the power trial we use a, a float blade on top of the finish blade is how we do our finishing some guys just use combo blades where they use the same blade to hit it the first time which is the float and then they use the same blade to hit it with the finish so we just do it a little differently um, we like the float blades they're a little heavier blade they uh, they leave the surface of the concrete open so they don't seal off the surface too early which could seal in some water or seal in some air and cause blisters and bubbles so that's one of the reasons we like those float blades. Plus, I just feel like it's a little faster to use the float blades than the combos. Uh, I've used combos enough in the past to know that the difference between the both. So anyway, we just use the combo blades. So once we get done floating the, the concrete, the next thing I like to do is I like to go around and steel trowel my edges while the, while the concrete's still a little green. And that's the next step. So we'll get them all steel troweled. And then we'll probably give it a half, at least a half an hour before we hit it again with the power trowel. So like I said, after you get done floating it with the power trowel, you're going to use your hand trowel now. And this is what you'll be using for the remainder of the, the hits, you know, doing your edges. And just slightly tip up the edge in the direction you're going. Keep sliding the trowel. Don't pick it straight up off the floor. And just put a little bit of pressure downward on it and keep sliding it and you'll smooth the edges out. All right, so it's been about a half hour since we floated this the first time, and we're going to check it again. The way I check it is I get right on it, I walk on it like this, and then I, I look at my foot tracks, and you can see I'm barely leaving a foot track. So that means the surface is drying up pretty good. Now, if I was leaving a foot track, like a real wet foot track, then I know that I'd have to give it a few more minutes, let it dry up a little bit more. But as you can see, um, leaving a little foot track, but not much of one, just barely one. So that's that means this is about ready to hit again. So we're gonna we're gonna float it again. I think I'm gonna leave those float blades on and hit it a second time with the float blades, and then we'll put the finish blades to it. All right, so when I talked about that pattern, as you can see, the, the time I hit it the first time, I kind of went in, let's say, like an east to west type pattern. You can kind of see it on the floor there. Now I'm going to cross that pattern 90 degrees and go kind of north to south. And the reason we do this is it helps, it helps flatten the slab even more than it already is. If you continually hit it in the same direction every time you use the power trowel, you're going to create little waves in the floor and although you might not be able to see them if you ran a string over it or put a two by over it then uh, you'd see those little dips and waves underneath that so if you cross your patterns when you power trial that's going to be a big key to help keeping it flat and it's just that's how all the pros do it and that's what i'm doing here to show you guys all right so it's been about another half hour since we second floated this thing we're going to check it again by walking on it Let's walk on it, check out our, not really leaving a footprint at all. You can see it's pretty dry, so we're going to, we're going to lay it down. I'm going to kick off, 
you see I got those big float blades on there. I'm going to kick those off and use the finish blades that are underneath them. So the key to finishing, like I said, is, you know, I said there was a half an hour between this time and the last time we just hit it. For you new guys out there, you know, you can't just keep hitting the, the concrete over and over again with the power trowel. you got to let it dry up in between hits. So, and the time, the, the amount of time it takes for it to dry up in between hits is going to be different on every slab. You know, and a lot of that's dictated by... Not only the mix, you know, the, whatever the concrete mix is, but the, the day, what, how hot is it? If the sun's out, if it's windy out, you know, those are the little things you got to learn as you become a concrete finisher. Um, and you kind of understand the characteristics of the drying times of the concrete the more you do it. But the key is just getting out there and doing it. So, you know, hopefully your boss lets you do this and you can learn how to do it and become a good finisher someday. But if you if you never get the chance to get out there and actually finish the concrete, then it's it's really hard to learn. And, you know, you can watch a video like this and get an idea, but actually getting out there and doing it is key to, to really learning how to do it right. So after I hit that, that last time, I gave it another half an hour before you see me hitting it here again. And you can see when I was hand troweling that edge up against the building, you know, the sun radiating off that building makes that edge up there really warm and that edge dries really fast. Even though it's only, you know, in the low 40s today for temperatures, with the sun beating on the concrete like this, it still dries pretty fast. You can see we got the board stripped off already and it's probably around noon time 12 30 you know we started pouring this at seven o'clock we obviously you know on on a day like today where we started and it was in the 30s we put calcium chloride in the concrete for an accelerator and the concrete also had hot water in it about 160 degree water in it so that helps it dry fast too so this thing is actually drying really good for a day like today and what we're going to do this is all getting covered with tile so that slab is just about done as far as power troweling it's just about shined out burnt out and luke and darren are just going to get out there and wipe off what little bit of fuzz is on there and we're going to finish this thing up that way so um, then we'll end up covering it up but that's the basics on how to finish a slab with a power trowel guys so it's one o'clock right now <clears throat> we're all done power troweling we're just wiping off what little bit of fuzz is left on there from the power trowel this is all getting tile over it so the, the slab is getting completely covered. So like I said, it's 1 o'clock now. We're all done troweling. We started troweling around 10 o'clock this morning. So from start to finish, it was three hours with the power trough. And last thing we got to do is we're going to saw our expansion joints in this. And then we're going to cover it back up with the tarp, put some hay on it, and then we'll be out of here. We do saw expansion joints, like I said, in all our slabs. And I, I don't show this on this video but i'll link to one at the end of the video it'll pop up where you can see us sawing our expansion joints and how we do that and what we use for a saw that's pretty standard that's me measuring them out right there so we're going to cut one down the middle each way on this and those saw cuts will just help control any shrinkage cracks or expansion cracks in this slab so for you new guys that want to do a slab on your own or you want to attempt to do your own slab like i said down in the description down in the show more down below the video I got my concrete slab course and that'll teach you everything you need to know about doing a slab like this so I mean I highly recommend that it'll save you a ton of money a ton of time and it's well worth the cost 
And thanks again, guys, for watching. We'll see you on the next video.